right? So all of these things, as, as we have to give an account someday to the Lord for your lives, the first thing he could legitimately ask us is how did you take care of my kids? What did you do to help them fulfill the calling that I, God would say, that I had on their life? And we can't look at each other and say, well, we preached, we, we taught them the Bible. That's not enough. Teaching people the Bible is not enough. If that's your child, you're praying to the Lord and saying, Lord, what's your plan for this child? And each child has a different plan. And if you have a lot of children, you've got to be specific and pray for each one because there's a different plan for each one. Same parents, different plan. That takes work, doesn't it? But isn't it amazing, those of you that are parents and you see your children stepping into the thing they were called to do? That's what John said. I have no greater joy than to see my children walking in the truth. Oh, it's amazing. Well, that's what God's going to say to us and say, what did you do? How did you help them grow into the gift that I put in them? Did you pray for them? Did you speak it over them? Did you say, this is what God is saying to me about you and who I want you to be, who God wants you to be? Well, if we haven't been then we need to. And you could come up to us and say, I need you to speak into my life. What is God showing you about me? We should never back off from that, okay? So that's all I'm saying. Theory's great. You have to understand the principles, but if we're not living them out, that's a big problem because you're only going to get good at it by doing it. All right, you got that, you got that point. And uh, there's this question that comes up often in Bible studies about the fruit of the Spirit, right? And, and I'm guessing a lot of you probably memorized it if you were raised a Christian and you were in Sunday school. How many say they could list off the fruit of the Spirit by memory? There's quite a few. Yeah, that's cool. It's good to know it up here. But I think sometimes we miss, like, we don't try to develop those fruit. We try to develop a relationship with God. And as a result of our relationship with God, what do we get? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We could go on and on, right? That's not a, a, an exhaustive list. It's just what, he, what he's trying to tell us, Paul is in Galatians there, he's saying, look, there's going to be evidence. Like we sang today, right? I am evidence that God is real. Ha! My heart's been healed. I've been changed by his power coming into my life. But you can't try to produce more fruit. You're going to produce fruit. The question is, is it good fruit or bad fruit? <laughs> right? Well, don't judge me. Okay, I'm not judging you. You can decide for yourself what's good fruit and what's bad fruit. If it's lining up with scripture, great. So you could measure your fruit against this list, but Paul also gives a pretty long list of what is bad fruit, doesn't he? Murder, drunkenness, all these great words in the King James, lasciviousness. Like, I don't know what it means, but it sounds really bad, right? <laughs> Licentiousness. Well, the point is, the closer we get to him, the more our root system changes, and then our behavior automatically shifts, and the fruit, the quality of the fruit that's coming off of us improves. It doesn't mean it, all the bad fruit totally goes away, but the more we're in, a, in this interactive relationship with the Lord, the more likely it is that we're going to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. I see heads nodding, that's a good sign. So Jesus had a brother named James, and he's kind of like the Apostle Paul, because he was right in your face. You know, he kind of cut right to the chase. He, he made his point clearly. And this is, again, from the Voice Bible, from James chapter 3. And you'll find in that little, short little epistle that James wrote, there's a lot of meat in there. I encourage you to read it. In verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 14, it says, If your heart is one that bleeds dark streams of jealousy and selfishness. <laughs> is that good fruit or bad fruit? If you're paying attention. That wasn't on Paul's list of good fruit, was it? A dark stream of jealousy and selfishness. Then don't be so proud that you ignore your depraved state. <laughs> You'll get a lot of amens on this one. <laughs> but look, that's exactly what was going on in that uh, synagogue when Jesus said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. They were in a depraved state. They were the religious rulers. God was in their midst and they couldn't recognize it because he didn't come the way they were expecting. That's part of what a religious spirit will do to us is, is make us think that we already know what it's going to look like. He's way too big for that. 
We have to just stay open to what the Spirit of God is telling us. Stay flexible in His hands. Live that prophetic lifestyle that we're constantly open. We know we study the Word to show ourselves approved, but He applies it and shows us how to use it in different ways every day. Right? You can't eat yesterday's manna. Give us this day our daily bread, the bread that won't perish. But yesterday's manna's got worms. So this is a, a requirement that we each day, that's why I say war for your altar. War for that place in the morning when you get down on your knees and say, Lord, today again, I can't do this without you. Just acknowledge it. Take communion right at your bedside before you eat, before you drink coffee. Take, take communion and connect with him. I'm going to war for my altar. I'm not going to let the world come in and steal it away from me. Like it's so hard. It's trying to do that it's so hard. It wants to rob your peace, right now especially. <laughs> so James goes on to say, if you're dealing with that selfish jealousy and a depraved state, that's the wisdom of the world, right? Let's see if I get it right here. The wisdom of this world should never be mistaken for heavenly wisdom. We could stay there for a while, couldn't we? When you come to church, you shouldn't be dealing with the wisdom of the world. You should be dealing with the Word of God through the filter of Holy Spirit that says this is how we are to live our lives today. And the more complicated life gets, the harder it is to translate that, isn't it? Because you could say, well, when the Bible was written, there was no such thing as COVID-19. Well, they might not have called it that, but they had plagues in those days too, right? I mean, there's just been healing going on from horrible things. Or you might think the world has changed in some other way. Listen, the Word of God has an answer for everything that we face. We just have to accept that. It's not always obvious what that answer is, but if we're willing to dig in there and really ask him to show us, he'll do it. All right? So I'm not going to ignore my depraved state or bring in the wisdom of the world because James goes on to say that originates below in the earthly realm with demons. <laughs> I told you, he's straight up. He's going to give it to you like it is. I don't want anything to do with that way of thinking. I want my mind renewed by the word of God. Amen. That's how we see that year of jubilee and the year of the Lord's favor. I'm finishing now. Proverbs 18, 16. You might know it because it says, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Anybody know that? And that could be your, your gift, like Terry has a gift to sing. That was obvious today, right? Give a hand to Terry. You know why I say that? Because the devil tried to steal her breath when she was a child. She was so sick with asthma, had such a severe case of asthma, she almost died from it. So when you hear her sing, it's like, oh yeah, devil, another black eye. When you hear Martin pray into the microphone, <laughs> he got a good volume, doesn't he? You might say he doesn't even need the microphone. He had throat cancer. Devil tried to take his throat, tried to squeeze out his breath. No way, devil. He's going to pray. He's going to sing of the goodness of God. All my life, Lord, you've been faithful. So that's what we do. We remember where we came from. But I love the way it says it in the voice. It says, not just that your gift will make room for you, but he says the right gift at the right time can open up new opportunities and gains us access to influential people. What a great way to live. And again, I'm not trying to be critical of any other version of Christianity, but if, if our version of Christianity has taken it out of the application of everyday living, then that's a mistake. He never meant it to be just a holding pattern until we die and go to heaven. He meant it to be an abundant life. I came to give you life abundantly here, now. The kingdom of God is in the earth. It's the year of Jubilee. It's the year of the Lord's favor to the degree that you want to tap into it. It's not so easy. Because you have an opponent, right? You have somebody coming against you who's a really good liar. And you can't believe the lies. You have to say, it is written, Satan, just like Jesus did. So one of the things I tried to explain over the years is this thing called prophetic scaffolding. All right, scaffolding is what they put up on the outside of a building. And, and the analogy was if you want to bring a tool to the person on the 10th, who's on the 10th floor, you've got to bring it down to the first floor. You don't just hang that tool and drop it, do you? Because if it lands on them on the first floor, they're dead. You didn't help them. So you try to meet them where they are. You, you go to where they are and you hand them the tool. And, and we're not always willing to do this in life. Are we willing to really look at the person that we're talking to, if it's somebody on our job who's not saved, and they're asking us, well, what's Christianity all about? 
That's an amazing opportunity, isn't it? See, the right gift at the right time, that's what this says, can open up new opportunities. But if we're not alert to what, to what Jesus is trying to tell us here, it's like, don't just give them a pat answer. Pause in that moment and say, Lord, what do you want me to say to this person right now in this time? That takes a little effort, doesn't it? Because we tend to just blurt out the first thing that comes to our mind. But no, he wants us to live in this disciplined place that it would be the right gift at the right time for the right person. And, and this is how I want to live the rest of my life. I wish I knew this younger because I did kind of buy into that philosophy. Well, I'm saved now. I'm not perfect. I'm going to still make mistakes. But when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. That's true. But that's way underneath the full version of what he wants for us to do. He wants us to be change agents, emissaries. You ever hear that word? I love that word. An emissary for the kingdom of God in the earth. But a prophetic emissary. Somebody who can read where the person at, is at in that scaffolding. So I talked to my sister-in-law, Linda. She's already an expert at witnessing to people. I mean, basically every time I have a conversation with her, she's telling me who she witnessed to that day. That's her gift. It's an amazing gift. And I don't have to go into detail with her about it. She's already experiencing it and doing it and leading people to the Lord. But I meet somebody else, I've got to have enough sense to say they don't have that experience. So they need a different approach, right? This is, the, this is the current way that the Spirit of God wants to work in our lives. There's so many opportunities that we have on a daily basis to use the gift that God gives us. And how good does it feel when somebody accepts the Lord? I mean, we actually, she tells us about this one lady all the time. And there's been such a transformation over the last couple years. When we would hear it at the beginning, it was really sounding bad. And then all of a sudden, God just came through. She would give the lady CDs from the church and different teachers that would come in and down the online services. There's been a transformation in this lady's life, all because of somebody on her job who was brave enough to witness to her. That's a force for the kingdom in the earth. And that's one way, but there's a million ways to do it. Just don't, don't restrict God, amen?